G'day YouTube, how the heck are we doing? It is Foul Play here. We're back for the third match of this Pauper League. Currently 2 0 and sitting pretty fine. We lost the die roll. Opponent is mulliganing to six. I think we keep this hand. It's not like super amazing. We're one white source off of like having a pretty solid 3 3. We have good edict protection. This is probably worthwhile. Looks like our opponent keeps their six and looks like we're versing fairies. So the thing against fairies is if you can be quick, aggressive, you can be in for a good time. All right, so I think it's like reasonable to, we wanna resolve one of these spells. I think we wanna guarantee the resolving of the cartouche. Shed Null's Eyes we can get back from the graveyard later on. Of course, we do have to establish white mana first. Um, this matchup can be difficult because it's our, our first like early turns um, we spend developing our mana and then once they've developed a couple of creatures they get some ninjutsu triggers and things like that. Uh, we can be left in a pretty funky spot where we can't do a whole lot. Uh, Safari Miscreant attacking. Oh looks like our opponent is gonna very Miscreant hold up Spell Pierce or like double Miscreant. I expected the ninjutsu there. Well, we uh, brick on white mana. Yeah, so opponent does get an extra card draw there. It's like attacking with both, let our opponent make a decision. My guess is they have spell pierce in hand. Um, it's hard to say. All right, so third island for our opponent, full cards in hand currently. Attacking with one miscreant, but the other is gonna stay back on defense, interestingly enough. We see some ninjutsu there, so card draw from our opponent. Does he replay the miscreant or is he holding up a spell status sprite here? This is the turn three, so no more land drops. Replays the miscreant, okay. Hey look, a lotus petal, beautiful stuff. Let's go ahead and throw that one down. <clears throat> so we've got plenty of mana to play for spell pierce. So that card is not an issue. All right, we will go ahead. We'll attack with, I suppose everything. If our opponent trades off these fairies with our ledge walker, our warrior token, that's not a horrible thing for us. Scout can block this Moon Circuit Hacker until all high hell, although uh, we do have to be a little bit careful to play around the likes of Mutagenic Growth. We still have First Strike here, so it's like double Mutagenic Growth that gets us. Trades off one Miscreant, that's interesting. Or are we buffing? All right, there's the buff effect. This is definitely a positive. They're doing this defensively instead of offensively. I'll take that. All right, so we see this Miscreant attacking. Could be another ninjutsu. They have plenty of mana to ninjutsu plus hot up counter magic. Both fairies attacking. Well, no blocks from us. No blocks to be had. All right, another moon circuit hacker. Another free card draw. Replaying miscreant. Getting that card draw. That's fine. We're like slightly ahead on this race. Not by a huge amount though. Happy to attack with both creatures again. This is fine. Actually trading off Moon Circuit Hacker. Interesting. See if this runs into Spell Stutter Sprite or Counter Spell. My guess is yes. I feel like we're sort of forced to play that one out anyway. It's not bad getting Spell Stutter Sprite out of their hand. Maybe we should consider holding this until we like have a Utopia Sprawl or an Abundant Growth and we can develop our mana after they tap out like that. So I think we, oh, we can't block. They're not attacking with their Moon Circuit Hacker. Okay. Attacking in the air. We are winning this race. We're eight versus 14. Oh, wow. What are we doing? Another ninjutsu. Third ninja at Moon Circuit Hacker. 15 cards deep. Another miscreant. All right, that's going to be extra card draw. It's a shame this isn't the one that scries, but I guess... The random card advantage is a little better for us than the filtering. Attack with the scout. Things get kind of dicey here if they have a mutagenic growth. So I think 
It depends. It depends on if they get priority in between us ordering blockers and them casting mutagenic growth. I'm not entirely sure on the rolling on that. But if they do get priority in between, we can like put Moon Circuit Hacker first. We're forced to deal one damage here. Mutagenic growth makes this a 3-3, three, three, so two damage marked. Die on crackback. Either way, we like just forced to assume they don't have it and just assume the best. This is dicey. They probably attack with everything at this point. Yeah, not surprised. We block one hacker and... I mean, our draws have not been very kind to us. Um, obviously not developing our mana is hurt and pretty far tempo-wise, we don't have trample either, but our opponent has been taking it on the chin like a champion. Oh, they decide to leave the Moon Circuit hackers back? No. So, like, blocking this one, it could still get snapped to hand and then ninjutsu'd out for spell status sprite. Alright, Ninja of the Deep Hours in. On the Fairy Miscreant. They're gonna get that card advantage happening still. We're all the way down to four. We're sort of forced into resolving Trample, which puts us in an awkward spot. Uh, I don't think we have the mana to actually resolve a trample effect. They're going to absolutely be holding up some sort of counter magic. What is battle? <laughs> well, if that's not, you know, <laughs> we, we have uh, eight other sources in our deck that provide white mana, but we hit three of the Lotus petals out of 12. 12 sources, we hit three of the four pedals. All right, that's fine. You can concede there. All right, so this is a pretty rough matchup, especially when it's mono blue like this. Occasionally you hit like an Is It Fairies matchup. I find that a bit easier. Um, Demir Fairies is probably about equal to mono blue. Um, the main thing that makes mono blue so difficult is firstly, they have all these cheap one mana flyers. Um, secondly, they have a large amount of permission and they have plenty of fairies to Basically counter anything with the combination of spell status sprite and counter spell. Uh, post board things get a bit worse as well because they have access to null as well and curfew which can hurt us too. So against is it fairies you want to bring in acolyte against demir fairies you want to bring in young wolf. We've seen there's potential for curfew in the sideboard. If it's just one or two copies in the sideboard I'm not hugely concerned about it though. Uh, we have got main deck Cartouche of Solidarity to offer us protection. Um, now, I think Crufix's insight as a straight swap for Ancestral Mask is reasonable. Um, it'll help us refuel our hand, which is pretty nice. Um, both of them cost three mana. Ancestral Mask does get a buff from your opponent's um, Moon Circuit hackers because they have enchantment typing, but I don't think that's enough to keep it in over something like Armadillo Cloak. Gutshot's a consideration, but it like only hits their spell status sprites and their fairy um, miscreants, right? Oh, and their fairy seers. So it's, it hits a few of their fairies, but I'm overall not super excited by Gutshot. I don't think it's worth bringing in. There is potential... Um, this hand is garbage, no creature. There is potential to counter a spell status sprite effect. Oh god, now we're just like mulliganing to five. We have to have like a god five here with good tempo um, and good draws afterwards. This this match is pretty much over. Uh, we're definitely not favoured in this matchup, by the way. <clears throat> it's just like they apply such good tempo in the early turns and then just hold up permission. All right, well, this is a really good looking five. I'm going to keep this. Bottom... Um, I think we bottom pedal, but this would be such a sweet turn one, like, um, forest, lotus pedal into utopia, sprawl and white, bogle plus ethereal armor. That would be so sweet and potential for turn two armadillo cloak. Um, unfortunately, I think we have to bottom the lotus pedal. It's pretty annoying. Reminder as well, guys, if you do enjoy this video, um, find it entertaining or informative, please consider subscribing. Looks like our opponent's holding up Spell Pierce. If they go after our white mana here, a kudos to them. We have to, like, force them to have it, though. We can't um, get around it. 
This could be a null as well. Interestingly enough, Forest was pretty much the perfect draw. Okay. So it looks like we just dodge any form of interaction. I guess there's potential for Brainstorm. Brainstorm, pardon me. I don't think these decks normally play Brainstorm. Ah, uh, Brainborn in Truda has Flash. I did not realize that. It's fine. This guy can also get pretty funky when you like look to block with a cartouche token. And like combat trick wise, they like just nerf it down so it deals no damage. So I think my opponent here is making the decision as to whether or not to go for ninjutsu or like hold up counter magic. Hopefully they go for the ninjutsu. I'm really praying here. All right, looks like they're holding up counter magic. I do not think that we run our armadillo cloak into a counter magic effect here. That just does not seem correct to me. Playing out Bogle seems fine though, so we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, Bogle resolves unopposed. Opponent burns two mana for the turn. I'm, that's overall a win. That might mean there's no spell starter sprite and they didn't think this was worth a counter spell. I think with spell starter sprite, they snap up the Bogle. All right, no blocks from me. Go ahead and ninjutsu. Please ninjutsu opponent. I'd really appreciate that. Moon circuit hacker. Damn, that's ninjutsu one, so they still have counter spell. All right, well, we find a cartouche of solidarity here. I think we actually diversify. We'll see how our opponent responds. Hopefully they use up counter spell and then tap aggressively next turn and we can resolve cloak. Really crossing my fingers on that one. All right, well, there is counter spell. Uh, so now we'll just go and start attacking. I'm gonna attack with both. This one's not gonna block the circuit hacker. Or maybe it does. I think if we're playing around curfew, we don't block the circuit hacker though. I think the damage is fine. Fairy Seer, beautiful. Opponent right, tapping mana. All right, so one top and one bottom off that scry of one mind. Of course, they've got the human, they've got the fairy. Nice one mana, draw two cards there. Immune circuit hacker is attacking. Draw another card. Plenty of card advantage in this deck. This deck is such a sweet deck. Maybe I should have held back this Bogle. I'd really like to see a Sentinel's Eyes here so we can get that Vigilance effect and really shut this Moon Circuit Hacker off. Uh, looks like they discard a Fairy Miscreant. At least this is like filtering and not just straight advantage anymore. Wow, uh, draws have been absolutely woeful here. Uh, we'll attack with the Bogle. This guy can now block Moon Circuit Hacker. I think I want it off the table. I think that was an unfair assessment before. All right, so we do get the damage through. Let's like pay only green here. Maybe our opponent lets it go through. I would like the extra blocker on the table. All right, our opponent happily plays the spell starter sprite. That's fine. Uh, they fire off of one mind during their turn, drawing two cards up to five in hand. All right, now they play out another Fairy Seer, another Scry 2. It's interesting they sequence this off after the Of One Mind. I guess they drew it from Of One Mind. Otherwise, that sequencing doesn't make sense. Our opponent just hard passes the turn to us. That's very interesting. Guess we Abundant Growth, any response opponent? That just hard resolves. Find a Utopia Sprawl. Yeah, sure. I would love to start playing around something like Spell Pierce. That seems very okay to me. Yes, we did technically put this on the wrong land, but I don't think we're ever jamming this cloak here. You have to remember as well, these Utopia Sprawls are buffing our Ethereal Armor. So it makes it more likely for us to actually attack into a board state like this. I think this is quite safe. They'd have to have... Double or triple mutagenic growth, right? Because we assign damage. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it'd have to be like triple mutagenic growth, which puts them to one. Okay, they go to two life. Brine Barrow Intruder is fine. All these small little creatures are fine. It's very strange they didn't want to chump block that with any fairy. Preordain from our opponent. Preordain is a flex spot for the mono blue deck, so it's possible that they have less copies of mutagenic growth even. 
or or they don't have the spell pierce. Um, still, we're in a commanding position this match, but even if we win this, we're not out of the waters. Hello, spreading seas on our Utopia sprawl. That's hilarious, man. Unfortunately, they control the spreading seas, even though it's on our land. So Ethereal Armor drops down to just four power. Anyone would think I'm versing modern merfolk right now with that spreading seas coming down in the fashion that it did. All right, three fairies attacking the air. Moon circuit hacker attacking wide. Interesting. So what does this mean? Because this bogle attacking wide if we draw a one mana enchantment is a real possibility. Because we can go green, white, one, right? So we can't double aura next turn with Armadillo Cloak being one of the auras. So I don't think, I don't, I don't think we can do that. I think we just uh, go ahead and block, get the trade. Circuit Hacker off the board is a good thing. Oh, Sentinel's Eyes is also a good thing. Well, I smell like my opponent still has counter magic up. So let Sentinel's Eyes start exhausting. Counter spell, spell status sprite out of their hand. All right, well, fine, we attack. Does this have unblockable? It does not. Forced to block in any case. We'll see what sort of blocker they put up in the future. It's possible they let this resolve looking to counter the Rancor. Seventh land drop for our opponent on their seventh turn. Have not missed a land drop. Everything attacking in. Looks like some ninjutsu action now. All right, ninjutsu on the spell starter sprite. That's an annoying one to go to hand. Finally gets that card draw. So guys, spell starter sprite has enough fairies to counter armadillo cloak, unfortunately for us. Ash Baron's not really what we're looking for. Let's look to attack. There's a possibility to post combat the armadillo cloak. Opponent flashing this in as a chump blocker. That's the worst mode for it, right? All right, I think we go for Armadillo Cloak now. Uh, we'll make them have the counter spell. I think they do, but let's make them have it. We're close to having the board state in a controlled spot here, so there's counter spell. I think we set a stop on our upkeep as well before we draw. Just so we can cycle Ash Barons before our draw step. These attack, Ninja back, that's fine. Eight there. We go to six, we just need to get one attack in still. Land cycle you. Uh, we'll guarantee our white mana now. Uh, absolute. Awful, awful draw there. All right, so that one goes through. Unfortunately, we don't get to play our land. I, I have like yielded to my turn and it seems like I can't cancel it with the uh, F5 command, which seems weird. Yielded to my next upkeep. Uh, attacking in for three. All right, Ninjutsu, this is gonna guarantee the chump locker for them next turn and they have lethal in the air. I don't see how we don't get out of this. We need to draw a trample and resolve it. Which I don't see happening. Did they bounce not spell status for right? That seems weird. Aha, we finally got past that awful yield thing. All right, well, I mean, our opponent wins. Uh, we were very anemic on our auras. We weren't able to resolve Armadillo Cloak. I don't think we were too rash casting it when we did. I will play Bogle of Blue Mana for flavor, but um, this one's very over. All right, so yeah, we end up losing that one, unfortunately. I think our draws were pretty weak, um, like aura-wise. The only thing we hit was Sentinel's Eyes, I believe, and then Abundant Growth Utopia Sprawl. Weren't able to resolve that trample critically. Um, had a good chat with my opponent as well. Um, so if you guys are interested, you can give it a pause and a bit of a read there. Um, but yeah, basically he was saying he shouldn't have been blocked down to uh, two life. Um, he should never have let me put him to two. That was a mistake. He was holding three mutagenic growth in hand. He personally is not playing curfew. Um, 
and I should have blocked a turn earlier on the Moon Circuit Hacker. I allowed him one filter where he discarded a land drop. Um, allowed him to get that one card deeper where it didn't have to. Anyway, um, that was a decent game and at least competitive. Pretty close to getting there, just not quite. Thanks all for watching. As always, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Till next time, have a wonderful day and I'll see you then.